I'm Dr. Barry Epley, plastic surgeon of Indianapolis, and I'd like to discuss with you the surgical correction of protruding ears, otherwise known as Odo. The ear is a remarkably complex anatomical structure with a lot of little involutions, depressions, and prominences, all of which have names. But I want you to pay particular attention as we talk about the protruding ear to the helix and the anti-helix, which forms the outer portion of the ear. For it is here that lies the problem of what makes the root. In the protruding ear, the most usual cause is loss of the anti-helical fold or this crease, thus the outer helix sticks out. It can also be caused by too much of the bowl or concha being present, and oftentimes correction requires manipulation of both of the areas. There are lots of numbers that one can use to measure what makes an ear look good or how close should it sit to the side of the head, uh, but I think emotionally uh, it's more of a visual issue than it is necessarily worse. In general, the helix of the ear should be within 20 to 30 degrees of the side of the scalp. This would be considered normal and certainly wouldn't draw your eye to it if it stayed within this angulation range. The correction of protruding ears is remarkably simple and incredibly effective. In a one-hour procedure, the ears can be quote-unquote pinned back. This is done through an incision on the back of the ear as illustrated here where multiple permanent sutures are placed to recreate the anti-helical fold and sometimes to remove a little bit of that concha or excess bowl if present. This makes and can be seen right on the operative table. When one is doing the procedure, as illustrated here, you want to be able to create that effect immediately by placing just three or four sutures. Sometimes, uh, once the cartilage is back, uh, it can be seen on the operative table that the earlobe still sticks out, and part of this incision may be extended downward into what we call the fishtail to bring the lobule back in better alignment uh, also. But either way, one has an uh, incision on the back of the ear that is uh, well hidden with uh, dissolvable sutures. Most commonly, otoplasties are done in children in the range of four, five, six, or seven years of age to prevent being excessively teased at. In a one-hour procedure, the ears can be brought back, and if you look carefully in the lower right here, in the uh, after-surgery photo, you can actually see the incisions, which are still red as they are healing. But this procedure really has a minimal recovery, just wearing a head dressing for a few days and much pain. The second phase of otoplasty is usually done around puberty in the early to mid-teenage years where a child may have had protruding ears for a long time, but they have now gotten to the point where they would like it uh, to be corrected. Regardless of the age, the otoplasty result is done the same way, exactly the same immediate results. The last age group is the more adult group where no matter how old you are, the ears can be pinned back in the same operation. Uh, just as effectively as it was a child. Uh, like all surgery, otoplasty is not complication free, but the number of complications is remarkably small. Uh, I personally have never seen a hematoma or early bleeding after surgery. It is always possible to have infection, and that is why we put patients on antibiotics during and after surgery. Really the most common complication that I have ever seen is long-term eventual protruding of one or two of the sutures, which could occur over anyone's uh, lifetime. Occasionally, the ear is not corrected enough as the sutures may have lo loosened or gotten pulled, and one still may have one of the ears which sticks out a little further than the other, which may require a touch-up surgery. But overall, complications with otoplasty are few, and it is a very gratifying and dramatic procedure which works quite quickly.